Hi everybody, I'm Dr. Anna Garrett and I am a hormone expert who helps women in perimenopause figure out natural solutions for their hormone imbalances so they can rock their mojo through midlife and beyond. And coming to you on a Sunday afternoon, it's a little odd, it's not my normal time to do things, but I am getting ready to do my own Dutch test and I get a lot of questions about this test um, in my Facebook group called the Hormone Harmony Club. And I thought, well, why not just do a Facebook Live and go through the whole thing with everybody? And so that is what I'm gonna do. And the reason I decided to do this um, is because I've been experiencing some changes in myself that I'm not happy with. And um, I've always used saliva testing up to this point but I use the Dutch test with my clients, and I thought, well, I need to do this for myself, so I'm going to do that. So th what have I been noticing? Well, um, insomnia is, has been my little piece of perimenopause hell um, the entire time I've been going through it. So I'm not officially menopausal yet. Um, if I make it to February, I will be. So I'm keeping my fingers crossed. But my insomnia has started being a little bit worse despite the fact that I have this entire cocktail of things that I take at bedtime. And I'll talk a little bit about that in just a minute. Um, and I just don't feel amazing and, and I wanna feel amazing. And the other part of it is, is that um, since I am close to menopause, uh, if I ever need estrogen, given my breast family's breast cancer history, not mine, um, but my sister has had it and my mother died of it. My grandmother had it and so it is um, very prevalent in our family. We don't have the gene, we know that, but I wanna make sure that I'm doing things um, to, to take good care of myself. So if I ever get to the point where I need to consider estrogen therapy, I want to know how my body uses it. So with the Dutch test, you're able to see how the metabolites um, are processed and one of those contributes more to breast cancer risk than others. So I would um, like to see how my body handles that and um, I'd like to make sure that my cortisol is all good because I've had issues with that in the past and so this will give me an opportunity to really take an in-depth look at it. So that's what's going on with me. And so today, what I'm gonna do is walk you through how you get started with the Dutch kit, because I have to start at five o'clock. So I thought, well, what a perfect time to, uh, to do this. So what does the Dutch test test? Um, the Dutch test is a urine test, so it's dried urine. You basically urinate on filter paper strips or you dip them in urine and you let them dry and you send them to the lab. And we are testing all of the sex hormones, so that would be estrogen, all three kinds, because your body makes three kinds of estrogen, estrone, estradiol, and estriol. So we're gonna test all of that. We're gonna test progesterone. We are going to test testosterone. That's the other thing I wanna know about too, because um, I don't wanna start losing muscle mass, and if I need testosterone, then I would certainly be willing to um, try that out. So that's the other thing I'm curious about. We will test cortisol at four times during the day. And not only do we get to see the absolute levels of free cortisol, we also get to see metabolized cortisol. <clears throat> and this is important because the metabolized cortisol compared to the free cortisol can give us some clues about thyroid function and insulin resistance. So it goes beyond just the cortisol. And when I get my results back, um, I'm going to go through them sort of in a high level way. I'm not going to get into all the nitty gritty because that would take too long. That takes me an hour consultation with my, my clients. So, but I'm going to go through it and kind of tell you what I pick out of it. But that'll be probably in about three weeks because it takes a couple weeks to get the results back. So we, we're gonna test the sex hormones, we're gonna do cortisol. Um, we will also look at organic acid markers for vitamin B6, B12, and glutathione. We will look at um, metabolites of neurotransmitters, so dopamine, serotonin, and norepinephrine. We get a reading for melatonin. Um, and what else? 
Um, there's one marker of um, inflammation that I will also be able to see, which gives me an idea of the level of inflammation my body has. So I'm pretty excited to do this, and it really is um, an amazing amount of information. And when I go through the consultation with my clients, they're just blown away by, by what we can learn and the ways that we can, man can manipulate the various pathways um, to make sure that we're getting outcomes that the clients want and we're also doing it safely. So my current insomnia cocktail consists of 400 milligrams of progesterone. Hi, Krista, how are you? I'm so glad you're here. Krista, Krista knows about Dutch testing, um, so we just did hers. But anyway, um, 400 milligrams of progesterone, for 200 milligrams of magnesium glycinate, um, a, an adaptogen blend, um, a nootropic herbal blend, which has things like L-theanine and passion flower in it. Um, it's got about six different things. And so I've got that, and then I take a tiny dose of Xanax to top it all off. And most times I sleep pretty well. Um, I do tend to wake up early, so that's why I'm curious about my cortisol, because if you're waking up about four o'clock in the morning, that generally is when your body sends the first cortisol spike to start to wake you up. So uh, anyway, that is my current sleeping regimen. I also take DHEA every other day. Um, I didn't tolerate uh, daily very well because uh, it made my face break out. So what I'll be able to see on this Dutch test is does my body prefer the pathway for androgens, which are DHEA and testosterone, does it prefer the pathway that results in things like acne and oily skin and anger and irritability um, and hair loss? So I'll be able to see that. So I'm, I'm excited about that too because I don't really know anything about it. Uh, personally. Um, okay, so there are two kinds of Dutch test. This is the Dutch Complete, and this tests all the things that I just told you about. Um, the cost of this test, test kit for me is $250. Uh, for you, it would probably be $350 because um, that's what you can order this directly off the Dutch website for yourself if you want to. I highly discourage you from doing that because it is very complicated to interpret and it will not mean a lot to you if you do this on your own. I don't ever mark up the test kit um, cost to me. I don't ever mark it up to my clients. So I sell it to you for what I pay for it. Okay, so there's that one. And then if anybody would like to tell me who's here, that would be awesome because the only person I know that's here is Krista. And I'd, I'd love to know who has joined in um, on a Sunday afternoon. So this is the Dutch Plus kit, and this is their newest one. Um, this one is, I think, $325 to me. And it has um, a saliva component to it that looks at your cortisol awakening response. And what that is, is some extra samples that are done like right when you first open your eyes in the morning, then 30 minutes later, and then 30 minutes after that. Hi, Sarah Jane. Nice to see you. I'm glad you're here. And thank you for participating in the Hormone Harmony Club so much. I appreciate it. Um, so the cortisol awakening response gives us more insight into whether your adrenal glands are making cortisol like they should. And some people, if, if they're not, some people call that adrenal fatigue. Um, that is a little bit of a misnomer and, an, and another topic for another Facebook Live because that has its, whole, uh, has its whole conversation to go with it. Um, and I'm not gonna get into that today. Okay, so you know what kind of kits you have, your choice of. Um, so the first step is to fill out the sheet that has all of your demographic information. It asks for any hormones or supplements or prescriptions that you're currently taking. It has a place to list your um, times of collection. And um, then the back is where you list your symptoms that you are experiencing. So it asks about um, trouble falling asleep, staying asleep, hot flashes, um, sex drive, breast tenderness, all of the things that can indicate a certain 
hormone imbalance, and this helps me when I'm working with clients. Uh, I mean, I have my own intake form that's much more extensive than this, but this just helps me match up what the test results say versus what you say you're experiencing in your body, because sometimes those are two different things. And I have clients who have like rock bottom estrogen, and you would think they'd be having hot flashes, but they're not. And so I don't want to do anything about something like that if it's not bothering somebody. Um, it asks for any other diagnoses that you have. So I have ulcerative colitis, which fortunately, fingers crossed, is almost never active. And so I really um, am blessed in that way. So uh, it also asks you what the top issues you want to address are. So um, as I've said, I want to I want to find out more about insomnia and any imbalance that's contributing to that as well as night sweats because I have those too. And then it'll ask for any additional medications that you're taking. So that's step one. And I would just like to say to those of you who are on here who have done this test with me, I want to apologize because this is a lot more complicated than I thought it was. So it's not undoable and it comes you know, with very detailed instructions, but you do have to pay attention to what you're doing um, and what you're eating. So let's talk about that for a second. So um, there are some foods to avoid as much as you can for 72 hours before you do the Dutch test. And those would include avocados, bananas, eggplant, kiwi, um, pecans, walnuts, plantains, plums, and pineapple. And I have not dug into this to see exactly what the substance is that can affect the test results, but I will at some point, I just haven't done it yet. And then there are some supplements that can also um, affect the neurotransmitter results that you could get. So those would include things like 5-HTP, which I know some of you are taking, um, SAMe, uh, Quercetin, St. John's Wort, and there's a longer list than that, but it's important to read that list and just pay attention to it. So the, the Dutch test is really designed to allow you to stay on your hormones um, while you're doing the testing. And the exceptions to that would be oral progesterone or pregnenolone, and you do have to stop, and, and DHEA. So you do have to stop DHEA 48 hours in advance, and then um, oral estrogen or pregnenolone has to be held for 72 hours. Anything like progesterone that you take at night should be taken after the nighttime sample is collected. But things like gels and creams that are hormone replacement can, can be continued. Um, if you are using patches or pellets, you should do the collection midway, um, midway in your dosing cycle. So for instance, pellets are done every three to four months. You would probably wanna do collection like at month one and a half or two if you're doing that, depending on whether you're at three or four months. Patches are usually every three days, so you'd want to do it, you know, say a day and a half into it. So um, the other thing they say is don't skip doses of birth control pills if you're if you're doing this. Um, I say I did I did say that I take progesterone, Sarah Jane. I take um, compounded. Um, oral progesterone. So it's like Prometrium or I think um, in the UK you have Utrogestin, I think. Um, so it's the same thing. Mine is just made at a compounding pharmacy and because it's less expensive for me. So they don't want you to take birth control pills or to hold birth control pills for obvious reasons. Um, if you hold birth control pills and you get pregnant, then there you are. Um, I say if you're on birth control pills, you probably shouldn't be doing this test because birth control shuts down all of your hormone production. And so um, when it comes to the sex hormones, you're really not gonna get, you're, you're not gonna get an accurate reading and so you're really wasting your money in my mind. If I have clients who are on birth control pills who want to do this, I ask them to be off for a couple of months before we do it because I don't want people wasting their money. Um, knowing that we're gonna get inaccurate results. Okay, um, so the, the kit comes with five uh, filter paper strips and they just look like this. 
And so what you do is you basically collect urine and you dip it in the filter paper until it's soaked and then you leave it open to dry. Um, you can also urinate directly on this. I think, <laughs> I'm not sure I'm talented enough to do that, so that is not what I'm gonna do because all I can think is I'm gonna make a huge mess. So um, it comes with five. The extra one is um, if you get up to go to the bathroom at night, you should collect that one as well because they take that overnight sample plus your morning one to, to take an average for your cortisol. So it's important um, to collect at least one overnight one. If you get up more than once, you, only, you still only need to do the one. All right, so that's that. So we get our samples. Um, I'm sure I'll have five because I always get up in the middle of the night. And once they're all dry, we put them in the little plastic bag they provide you with an envelope. They even tell you how many stamps you need. It takes seven. Um, if you are in a foreign country, I am not 100% sure how the shipping works. Um, if you're in the UK or anywhere else in Europe um, and you want to do this, let me know because I, I, I don't know her personally, but I know of someone in the UK that offers this test and it would be a lot simpler for you to do it um, with somebody who was in the in the country. Um, there are some restrictions about how much fluid you can you can drink between samples. They don't want you drinking a lot of fluid because the, it'll then dilute the sample. They also don't want you to drink alcohol or caffeine after noon or lunch on the day that you're going to start your collection. So my caffeine and alcohol is, is done for the day. Um, if you mess up, um, Well, if you mess up, you're gonna you're gonna be short some strips. I haven't had anybody mess this up. Um, I've had people mess up saliva, and they're really good about sending a replacement set of tubes to redo the collection. Uh, these do not have to all be done on the same day. So let's say if all I was able to do today was the five o'clock and the bedtime sample, um, and I needed to wait, I could wait like a couple of days and and still do the the morning and and. Uh, two hours later after I get up sample. Um, I know that was probably just terribly confusing. I recommend doing them all on the same day just because it's, it's easier that way and you're not trying to, to um, orchestrate the, the whole collection process. So I've got myself prepared. One thing you do need to know is that when you do the morning sample, it needs to be done within 10 minutes of you waking up. So don't, don't lay in the bed and think about it. Go ahead and get up and get that collected. Because what happens is when you wake up, your cortisol is the highest it's going to be during the day. Well, actually 30 minutes after you wake up, it's the highest. But um, we want to make sure that, that we get a good high cortisol reading. And the only way to do that is for you to go ahead and get up and um, get that sample collected. So don't lay around in the bed. What else have I forgotten to tell you? Okay, so the, the timing of the collection. Um, if your cycles are still regular, and assuming they're 28 days, you should do this on day 19 to 21 of your cycle. And cycle day one is the first day of your period. So for people who have regular 28 day cycles, it's, it's really easy. My dog's about to go nuts because there's a squirrel out there on the bird feeder. So I apologize in advance for the barking, um, unless he manages to control himself. If you have longer or shorter cycles, then add or subtract the number of days that you go longer or shorter and do it then. If you have irregular cycles, this is where the challenge comes in. So if you're, you know, if you've been in perimenopause a long time, the odds are really, really high that you're not ovulating at all. And so I tell those clients to just do the collection anytime they want during the month. The tricky part is for people who are newly in perimenopause or have had an ablation. Um, that is a situation where basically the lining of your uterus is, is burned off. It's done when you have really heavy periods um, and it's done to, to, to lessen the bleeding. And sometimes the bleeding goes away altogether, so you don't really have a way to judge whether you're having a period or not or when you've ovulated. So in that case, um, it's best to get a basal body thermometer, and this is a special thermometer. You can't use just a regular oral thermometer. 
or um, and when your temperature rises, that's a, that's a sign that you're um, ovulating, and it's just a small rise, it's not big. The other thing you can do is go to the drugstore, the dollar store, and get an ovulation predictor kit and um, use that every day. And when um, it starts turning positive, count forward six days and then do your test. So it's a little bit more complicated. Um, but again, that's the best way to get a, a reliable result and that's what we want for you. So um, that's pretty much it. Who has questions? I see there's five of you here. Okay, well, I'll give you a second to type them in if you have it. So I offer this um, kit in my practice along with a custom set of recommendations based on your results and a one hour consultation to go through the whole thing with you. Um, the price for that is $997, and I know that is a lot of money, but it is an investment in your health and an investment in managing perimenopause and making sure that your experience is as good as it can possibly be. I do not take insurance, but I do offer payment plans if that makes it easier for people. Um, and as I said, the, the test kit is a huge component of the cost of this. So um, if you're interested in exploring that further, I'm, I'm happy to hear from you. Um, I, I find it to be a value. I know there are a lot of doctors out there who say that testing hormones is not a value because they fluctuate. Well, that is true, they do fluctuate. But even, even fluctuating, you're still gonna be able to see the magnitude of the imbalance between progesterone and estrogen and do something about that. Um, Melissa, as you move through perimenopause, you stop ovulating. So um, as, you, as you're newly in perimenopause, you may have certain months where you don't ovulate, but you may still have a period. So you can't really use that as a sign to know it, whether you've ovulated or not. Um, so yes, you do stop ovulating. And by the time you get to menopause, you, you're, you're not ovulating anymore. We're all born with the, the, all of the eggs we're ever gonna have. And so as we go through um, our reproductive e years, we start, as I heard it described once, scraping the bottom of the egg basket. Um, and we just, we run out of eggs or they're not, or, or we just aren't able to um, produce a, enough FSH to, uh, to stimulate the body. Well, actually the FSH goes up, but our bodies aren't able to be stimulated enough to ovulate. Um, Karen, what type of, okay, I talked about that at the beginning. So, so Karen, um, insomnia has always been my sort of little piece of perimenopause hell, and it's gotten a little bit worse. Um, I also just don't like feel great and I want, I want to feel great and I also want to know when, um, I also want to know uh, how my body uses the hormonal pathways. So I have a very strong history of breast cancer in my family um, and I, before I ever entertained anything like that, which I am not at this point, but I would want to see how my body used the, the, the detoxification pathways for estrogen, and that's what this one of the things this test shows. I also wanna see how my body would handle testosterone replacement, because that is also something I would consider down the road if, if I needed to. Um, so those are the things I'm experiencing, just it's, it's mostly the insomnia that uh, is really getting on my nerves, and I, I know, I think you have that issue too. Krista, how do you know when you stop ovulating? Um, well, a lot of doctors will test an FSH, follicle-stimulating hormone, and that's a hormone in your brain that basically says how hard your body is working to try to ovulate. Um, that can be useful because above, I think it's 50, that is an indication that you were moving, you're in the, in the menopausal range. It doesn't necessarily mean that your periods have stopped. 
um, and it doesn't necessarily mean that you can't ovulate. So there's no real way to know. I mean, by the time you get to menopause, you know you're not because you're not having periods anymore. But like I said, you can still have a period and uh, not be ovulating because your body still has enough um, estrogen to build the uterine lining and that's part of the problem is you have enough estrogen to build the uterine lining but you don't have the progesterone to offset it so if you don't ovulate you don't make progesterone um, and so there's nothing to counterbalance that estrogen and the the lining builds and builds and builds and once it is time to have a period that's why periods become so heavy and clotty and all of the stuff that you know just annoys the hell out of us um, Karen, postmenopausal symptoms. Oh, Karen, I can't see the rest of your comment. Um, I know that you're still experiencing symptoms. Um, it's not letting me see the end of the comment. Let's see if I can figure out how to do it. Well, I can't. Um, Karen, if you want to post that comment on the Hormone Harmony Club, I'll, I'll, I'll go over there and answer it. I'm going to um, also post this video over there once I get it downloaded. So, Melissa, you're welcome. Um, Melissa, you are our winner. You are the winner of the package. Yes. Um, well, I want to thank you guys for being here. Um, I will, as I said, get back to you after I get my results back. I'll... Um, I'll do this on my uh, desktop so that I can share my screen with you and I'll walk through my results and uh, tell you what cha changes I, I plan to make. So um, this has been fun. I hope it's been informative. And if you have any interest at all in the Dutch test, please feel free to reach out to me and we can talk about um, whether that's a good, good step for you or not. So take care and I will see you soon. Have a great rest of your day.